Well, first of all, I want to introduce you to my uh, web page where you can obtain the uh, Excel sheet I'm about to describe on uh, really it's pretty remarkable on how it can uh, uh, predict the uh, stock market prices on the wave action uh, based on the four year discrete discrete four year transform. But anyway, you can find you can find the uh, software, the Excel sheet on River. River um, Riverside Software Innovations. So enough for the uh, commercial. Let me show you now the. Uh, well, first of all, let's look at uh, Warden Brothers uh, software of the TC TC two thousand software of the uh, SPXL today, which is. Uh, the uh, volatile form of the S uh, standard and poor and uh, it's three times volatile and most most of the day it went down this is uh, September 10th 2019 and uh, as you can see a good place to get in would have been right here to go long but uh, I'm, I've uh, captured these uh, prices and input them into the spreadsheet to show you the uh, really it's the Hearst waves that uh, but the found by using the discrete Fourier transform and you can see that in this wave action uh, that uh, all the uh, principles that Hearst talked about you can see in those waves uh, this shows the uh, Bollinger lines how the price goes up, bounces off, comes back down, but sometimes it doesn't. It keeps on going down, and you can lose money. So, how do you know when to get in, and when will the price keep going up? The wave action sh clearly shows that this was the point to get in and stay in, and it even shows these little uh, pullbacks. So let's go and look at the uh, Excel sheet. Here's the same stock curve. The uh, black curve is the closing price. That that price was input into the discrete Fourier transform input, and the uh, transform spit out these waves. Now, of course, the idea would be, say you're going along and you're inputting this data and you see this point come up. Now how do you know? Well, if you look at the the red wave is the uh, is the highest frequency, I mean the lowest frequency wave, and the lowest frequency wave generally has the highest amplitude. For this to really work you need just one or two waves in the in the Fourier transform, which are a lot bigger than the others, and it gets more than that, it's kind of hard to keep track of them, because we're going to try to mentally add sine waves. Okay, now let's just go back over here where we're interested. Here, you can see uh, the good get the good get in point is right here, and uh, could you see that? Well. You, you know that, the, oh, by the way, the uh, Fourier transform, the uh, stock price is equal to the sum of the waves. So the price right here is equal to the sum of the red, the green, the blue, the light blue, and the purple. So it's easy. I mean, it's just the sum. So the biggest amplitude is going to be the dominant wave that determines how the price moves. So when the price is, when the dominant wave is going up, the price goes up. You can see the black line. But then the, and by the way, these waves are oscillating about zero, you can see over here. So the dominant wave then gets real small, and the others are larger. You can see then they have the effect on the price. Then the dominant wave moves up and just starts getting higher in amplitude again and then it takes over again and the price goes up with it. So you could play it 
simply get in when the dominant wave comes down here and get out when it reaches its peak. But you got to be careful because if these other waves, the amplitudes increase, then that strategy may not work. So let's just follow this. Um, say we want to get in right here. How would we know? Or right here, really. So, well, we see the dominant wave. The red's going up. We want all the red if we to get for the price to go up. All the waves have to be going up, all right? So, uh, red's going up, green's going up, this blue's going up, this one has reached its dip, the lowest point, so it's going to be going up, and that, and we can be assured that these two will go up because they are sine waves and they have reached their dip. They're going horizontal. So they're going to at least stay horizontal. So they have only one way to go, and that's up. So this tells us that that going up, that going up, that going up, or that round on the top, but it's still going up. And these two are about to go up. And sure enough, look what it kicks in. With these going up, that staying the same, and these going up, the price shoots up. Easy to spot. All of them are going up. Now look what happens over here uh, when the uh, dominant wave, the red one, it, it's still dominant, but it's uh, lower in magnitude, out, uh, amplitude, and you can see that, uh, like like here where this blue one comes down. That's what causes this dip in the price. And these are going up. And then the price dips, comes down, stays the same, and then starts back up as that levels off. And these other waves are going up. And also the red wave is beginning to have some amplitude to it. So you can see how the way that works. So you really you're just trying to uh, get in when you see that the all the waves are going to be going up. So let's see right here. This one is peaking. This one's going up. This one is in a dip, so it's going horizontal. This one's going horizontal, and the the uh, dominant wave, the red one, is starting to go up. So everything's going to start going up through here. That's why that price went up. Now these little jiggles are caused by the higher frequency waves that have the lower amplitudes and they're they're along the zero line and they're just a lot of erratic uh, high frequency waves and that's caused these little waves. And you see those especially when the, the bigger waves, the higher amplitude waves become go through their z near their zero point. They're small, that way then the other small amplitude waves are more significant, and that's when you see this jitter. It's amazing, uh, it explains how these waves explain how the price reacts at the different, at the different uh, sections of the market. But here we can see the dip, that's the lowest price, that's what we see over here. And that dip is caused by the dominant wave reaching its bottom point. So we can see how to read the waves, and it's pretty simple. Now the it is it's a complicated a little bit by the waves always have the same frequency, but their amplitudes and their phases shift in order to for the Fourier transform to fit the price curve exactly. Okay. So I think when this was down here, or maybe when it was here, the red was had a lot higher amplitude than the others. And then it, as it peaked 
this the uh, this plot is at this point. Okay, so at this point, that's what the amplitude was. Back here, that amplitude of the red was a lot higher, and so it was more significant and uh, made this point even stand out even more. I see. Uh, maybe I can go back a little bit. This program. If you decide to buy it, you just input your, uh, there's 128 stock prices. If you're taking, uh, uh, if you're taking uh, one minute intervals, on one minute intervals, you would have to be 128 minutes, you input here. So that'd be at row 140. And that's all you have to do is input. So as time marches on, you just keep putting in new data and you'll see the plot down here and of course you take some Excel skills uh, it isn't automatically adjusting the uh, plot so that it has the best view uh, I've left that up to the user but this is just a bare bones uh, Excel chart and uh, a spreadsheet and it's uh, it calculates the discrete Fourier transform over here you can see there's the calculations for the discrete Fourier transform, and it's already set up for if you want 256 data points, you use these columns too. More, more likely, you would want to use maybe 64 data points. Okay. Now, uh, like I say, this is a one-minute curve. Well, the one minute means there are 518,400 samples per year. So we use that, and that's why you get these a frequency. The um, uh, lowest frequency is 4,050. The next one is 8,100. So those are why those frequencies uh, are such high numbers. But that works out real well. Uh, the uh, on a one minute curve though, you do have a problem uh, overnight. In the morning when the data starts up, it's um, the curve isn't any good. You gotta wait to, for the uh, for you to start getting good data or good curves. And usually by mm, 20 or 10 to 10, you know, you're, you're getting a fairly good curve. You can see where the waves are and whether or not you should get in or not. Basically, you just want to know, you may just want to get in if the red is dominant and it's at a, it's at a bottom, it's bottomed out. If it's big amplitude and it's at the bottomed out, time to get in. So basically, that's all the rule you need. This was a little bit harder to call if the, if the waves were this size, but you can see that that's going to, that one's coming down, and that's why that came back down here. And you see, though, that when this blue one, after it went through its trough, the price started up. And we see right in here, all the waves are going up. And that's why that kicked and went up. And actually, probably, a, a lot of these smaller waves joined these is the reason that went up. I don't follow all of those uh, waves. It just gets too complicated. But... Um, that's the uh, discrete Fourier transform applied to the stock market price. So you can see the waves in the uh, stock action. As uh, Hearst uh, pointed out, and uh, you can see that uh, Hearst said that uh, a peak is when they all round over. That's exactly right. And let's see this trough. They're not. The trough is when that one was in a. Uh, trough, that's in a trough, that's in a trough. These are peaking them, so that isn't the main low point. If they're all doing that, then that's the main, primary low point of the stock. This seems to be, at least for these five, was uh, a major peak. Okay, that uh, concludes the video, and uh, you can go to the website, just for a nominal fee, you can uh, uh, purchase the uh, spreadsheet.